Hallelujah. 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 Lord of all. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, church. Father, we praise you today. We give you honor today, Almighty God. Lord, of all. Lord we praise you. Lord. And we honor you today. Come among us, Lord, this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, today. 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 Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, merciful God. Thank you, merciful God. Thank you, merciful God. Thank you, merciful God, for your greatness and for your mercy. God, we give you praise today in this house. Hallelujah. Before you're seated today, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Is it different for you to be experiencing the sermon today in the house of God instead of in your living room? It is good to be back in God's house today, amen? amen? It's good for us to be back together. And I'm so excited about that and, and have great hope for the future. And I know that a lot of things are going on right now. A lot of controversy, a lot of uh, riots and things, and a lot of people's emotions are going in a lot of different directions. And even among the Christians, if we're not careful, we can allow that spirit to get on us to where we are angry. But I don't want us to let that happen. As we come back together, I want to challenge us to be, not to be the same church we were when we left, but to be a better church. I want us to be a church that is on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. That is evangelistic in reaching out to our community in every way that we possibly can. I want us to be more mission-minded. I want us to touch people around the world in any way that we possibly can through giving and caring. I want us to be a praying church that prays more, that believes we can change the atmosphere of our community, our state, and our nation through our prayers. I want us to let the joy of the Lord rise up and bring peace and faith and comfort to us. I want us to be a singing church. In good times and in bad times. I want us to learn the art of rejoicing in Almighty God. I want us to be more grateful and more thankful for the things we have. We got a little bitty glimpse of what it could be like for us not to be able to have church again. We got a little glimpse of what some of our brothers and sisters go through that cannot go to church. I want us to be grateful for what God has allowed us to have. And listen to me, church. I want us to be political. I want us to go to the polls and vote. One of the reasons our country is in the position that it is in is because the Christians are staying home. We need to go and vote. But most of all, I want us to be spiritual and practice the things we are taught in Scripture and to be a holiness people. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. Today I want to use as a subject, through it all. I want us to, to think about that for a minute. We've been through a lot in the last three months. We've been through a lot and from what they hear on the news, we're not through it yet. And from what we see in some of our cities, we're not through it yet. But through all of this stuff. One thing we can do is we can understand that God is in control. We used to sing that song, Through It All. And a little bit of it says this, 
I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know wrong, right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Church, we need to go back to the basics of the Word of God and begin to let the Word of God, not the emotions that we have, but the written Word of God, directed by the Spirit of the living God. Let it begin to give us direction. Let it begin to give us peace. Let it begin to give us hope. Let it begin to give us direction. Let it begin to help us. Let it begin to restore us. Let it begin to make us better men and women for God Almighty. We need the Word of God. If we would just practice what the Bible teaches us. I want to add as a side note, sing, church, sing. There is so much going on in our world right now. The coronavirus, racial tension, riots, defund the police, chaos on every hand. And on every street corner, there seems to be chaos. The great question becomes, how do we handle all of this? What are we going to do about this? Are we going to hide in our houses? What are we going to do to get past this? What are we going to do to keep the joy of the Lord as our strength? It is very simple. Let us begin to practice what the Bible teaches us. Do you think this is the first time that the world has ever been plunged into chaos? I challenge you to go back and read our history. The world has been challenged and been pushed into chaos. But in every situation, there was a group of people that would rise up full of the Holy Ghost. Destined to be what God wanted them to be. Determined not to let the enemy steal. Kill and destroy. And we have pushed back against the darkness. And my friend, we need to do that again. We need to rise up as a church and be the church of the living God. Not a fractionated body of Christ. Right now, the body of Christ is even fractionated. Half of them over here believe this, and half over there believe that, and another portion over here believe that, and another portion believe that. My friend, this is what we need to begin to believe. This is what we need to begin to hold on to, is the living Word of God and practicing just the simple things. The very simple things. Let me tell you, when sin was loosed on the earth, and begin to rain terror on the people of the earth. God gave instructions on how to get through it all. The problem is we've looked at one, at one other, other such solutions to the problem. And we've looked at the solution through optional eyes. Meaning it is optional for me to practice this. There are some things in scripture that we have to practice. We don't even practice it here in this congregation sometimes. Help me out, church. One of the great ways to get through it all is to learn to sing. It's amazing to me that we can stand in song service and, and 10 or 20 percent of the people are just standing there. Looking as if this is an optional thing. Do you understand what the Bible tells us about singing? Music is mentioned over 800 times in the Bible. More than 200 times, God instructs us to come into His presence with singing. There might be something to this singing and this music and this rejoicing and this letting the hand of God and the grace of God and the power of God and the strength of God to begin to flow through us. And we do this best by practicing the Word of God. Let us sing, church. Let us make music. The devil has even caused one portion of the body of Christ to not even allow music. Do you think the devil does not understand the power of singing and worship and music? Oh, trust me, he does. Let me tell you, he's having to listen to heaven. I don't know if you've heard it or not, but in heaven, we're going to cut up. 
We're going to act like Pentecostals in heaven. I got, the Bible said we're going to cry 24 hours a day. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We're never going to shut up praising God. We better get ready to learn to sing down here. Why do we sing and why should we sing? Because God commands us to sing in church. Psalms 149.1. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, and His praise in where? In church, in the assembly of the saints. When we get together like this, we are commanded by Lord God Almighty to lift our voice and begin to sing. And when you do, something powerful will begin to happen to you. When you learn the art of singing and praising God. See, we can only sing when we're happy. But the Bible tells us to sing at all times. To sing when we're happy. To sing when we're sad. To sing on the mountain. To sing in the valley. To learn to give God praise. This Psalms tells us to sing in our congregations. So many people can stand and not sing in a worship service. And just stand there. But God tells us to sing. We've allowed, we have allowed what is being sung to dictate or control if we sing or not. I don't like that song. You know, when you get to heaven, you might not like some of the songs he's written. Have you read some of them? Have you tried to sing some of them? I tried to sing with Moses. I couldn't figure out what key he was in. You know he had a song service when he got out on the other side. He talked about horses being drowned and chariots being washed away. I mean, I can only imagine what two million people must have sounded like when they broke out in singing. We are commanded to sing. Don't say I can't sing. Everybody can sing in the assembly of the saints. It didn't say you were supposed to sing a special or a solo. My wife tells me she likes it when I sing solo. So low she can't hear it. Great wonders are made known when you sing. Psalms 105 and 2. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all of his wondrous work. When you begin to sing, wonderful things begin to take place. Wonderful things begin to take place in the atmosphere where you're sitting in and where you're gathered. Wonderful things begin to take place in your personal life. And God begins to magnify and to teach us and to show us great wonders simply because we sing. When we sing, we are telling his story and our story. When we sing there is power in the blood, we speak of the sacrifice of Christ and what he's done for us. In fact, we ought to sing more about the blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There is wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. There is soul-saving power in the blood of Jesus. There is cleansing power in the blood of Jesus. There is sanctifying power in his blood. There brings joy when we sing about the blood of Jesus. When we sing, I never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my soul rolled away. We are singing about what happened to us when salvation comes. When we sing amazing grace that saved a wretch like me, we are telling of our lostness and how he found us. When we sing, oh, I'll fly away. We sing of heaven, and the list could go on, but singing is a powerful and effective way of telling the story of Christ. And of raising joy in our hearts. We view singing so wrong. Why does singing work? Because God commanded it to. God commanded singing to work. Singing to God is more than an act of worship. It is an act of obedience. That brings the favor of God near to you. When you begin to sing simply because God tells us 200 times, lift your voice in the sanctuary and sing to me. When you will do that, something powerful will begin to happen in your life. Why? I do not know other than God said it would. If God says do something, don't debate with him of whether I should do it or not. Obviously, he has put it in the book for a reason. And if he tells you 200 times, you know, maybe they were like us. They didn't get singing. But if he tells us 200 times to sing, maybe we ought to sing. Let me tell you what singing does. Singing breaks chains. 
Acts. Let's look at Acts 16, 25 through 26. But at midnight. See, Paul and Silas were thrown in jail for preaching the gospel. What are you going to do when you're thrown in jail? We come pretty close to being thrown in jail. You know, they arrested some pastors for having church. We come pretty close to being uh, thrown in jail. You know what we should have done when we got thrown in jail? Instead of calling our attorney, we should have called and pleaded our case in heaven's court. You see, there is a scripture that says you can plead your case in heaven's court. But we don't plead our case in heaven's court. We plead our case in the, in the court of popular opinion. And we call a lawyer and we call a newspaper and we call a news channel. And we want all of this. But this is what Paul and Silas did when they were arrested for preaching the gospel. The Bible said at midnight they were praying and singing. Do you think they were in good, comfortable positions when they begin to sing that song. I would, I'm going to ask Paul what the song was. In fact, I wish they would just send it down now so we could sing it a while. I don't know what song they sang. But the Bible said, but at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Listen to me. They were not just singing. They were singing to God. It might have been some of the song that they had heard and rehearsed from, from Moses when they, when they got across the Red Sea. God, you've drowned horses and chariots. I don't know what they were singing. But let me tell you what I do know. And the prisoners were listening. Revival broke out. You read on down. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors opened and every chain was loosed. What are you bound by this morning? If you will learn to sing instead of complain, I believe that addictions will be broken. I believe that strongholds will be torn down. I believe that we can walk in freedom because the scripture plainly says if we will sing. There was no court case for them. There was no army that came to get them. There was no arguing about the rights, Paul and Silas, to go free. They were freed because they sang a song. Singing is a powerful weapon because God designed it to shake prison and break bars and loose bondages. When we sing, we change the atmosphere. You see... When they were singing, the atmosphere in the prison changed. The prisoners who put them there started, or the guards who put them there started listening to the songs that were being sung. And you read on down in that, a revival broke out. And the jailer broke through, when, when he found out they hadn't gone anywhere, the Bible says he poked his head in with a light and said, What must I do to be saved? Not only did it break change, it brought revival. If we would learn to sing, I tell you, I have been in some church services back in the south. My God, we would sing the house down. I mean, the roof would almost come off of a building because of singing. And I've watched people get saved and healed and delivered in song service long before the preacher got to the pulpit. Why? Because they understood the art of singing. Singing is powerful. When we sing Sin can no longer hold on us. It cannot hold us captives. Our worship prepares us for a victory. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. And when they had consulted with the people, King Jehoshaphat was getting ready to be attacked by a large army. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord. That's a strange way to get ready to go to war. But you ought to do that. Things will go much better in your life when you just learn to practice those simple things that Scripture teaches. That should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now when they begin to sing and to praise the Lord, uh, praise the Lord set ambushments against their enemy. And their enemy killed each other and defeated each other. When you begin to sing all of that stuff that you've been going on, that anxiety and that fear and that emotional garbage and that unforgiveness and that bitterness and that turmoil that's going on in your life, when you begin to sing, let me tell you what God will do. He will send and set ambushes against the enemy of your mind and of your soul and they will be defeated. They will defeat themselves. Why? Because the Bible tells us if we do this, why do you think the enemy doesn't want you to sing? 
Why do you think he tells you you cannot sing? Oh, I sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. I sing because there's joy in my soul. I sing because I was lost and now I'm found. I sing because I know where my destiny is. I sing because I know the Lord is on my side. I sing because no enemy can stand before me. I sing because God gives me great joy and peace in my heart. I sing because He lives. When we sing, we are sending the Spirit of the Lord before us. To deal with the enemy that stands against us. When they began to sing, the Bible said God went out and set the ambushments. If we would learn to do that before we call 14 people with two gallons of oil. And somehow we think we're going to get free. And after two and three three hours of prayer, which it should not take that long, we're still where we were when we came in. Now, I'm just telling the truth. Now, how many know that's the truth? Been there, done that, and got this T-shirt. But I'm telling you, if we will learn to practice what the Bible teaches us, learn to sing. Learn to sing when you have fear. Learn to sing when anxiety is coming over you. Learn to sing when you're bitter and unforgiveness. Learn to sing. We allow the enemy to steal our song when we're in all of these positions. When the enemy comes against us. If we would learn to do what to do when the enemy comes. When the enemy comes, sing. When you're overwhelmed, sing. That's what they did. The army of Jehoshaphat was overwhelmed, outnumbered. They could not defeat this enemy. And they simply appointed some people and said, Go out in the front of us and begin to sing. And the Bible said, God sent an ambush against the enemy. Why don't you turn God loose on fear and anxiety and depression and addictions and get some freedom? Turn the voice of praise loose. And watch God run out in front of you and pull down the stronghold of the enemy. Watch him go out and set an ambush against those things that are against your mind. Watch him go out and pull down those things. If the church could learn to sing again, what strongholds would be broken down? What victories would be won? I believe it would help heal our land if every church across this nation would owe the Obey the scripture, lift our voice to God, what a different nation we would have. If we would come in singing and go out singing, if we would just praise the name of the living God, what a different nation we would live in. When we sing, God listens and he responds. Why do you think he does that? Because he commanded us to sing. And anything God commands us to do, when we do it, it gets his attention. When you simply obey the little scriptures. Oh, you know, I'm reminded of a guy by the name of Nathan that, that he, w- he was eat up with leprosy. And he went to the prophet because he heard that he could heal him. And the prophet said, well, I ain't even going to go out and see the guy. I'll send my servant out. He said, just go down to the Jordan and dip seven times. Well, it made the guy mad. He said, the Jordan River was a mud hole full of dirt and garbage. He said, I don't want to go down in there. Why don't he tell me to go to my country? We got beautiful rivers. And his servant was smarter than the king. And said, if he told you, not the king, but the commander. If he told you to do some great thing, would you do it? He said, well, yes, I would do it. He said, well, what's what's it going to hurt to go dip in that dirty river? The Bible said he went down to the river and he dipped seven times and he came up clean. Why? Why did it have to be the? Why did it have to be that river? That's the river God told him to go dunk in. He could have told him to go dunk in a clean river, but he told him to go dump in that dirty river. Why? I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't think anybody knows why. But I know this: when he obeyed and went down and dipped in that river, he came up clean. If he'd have went home and dipped in the clean river, he'd have still been a leper. And when we don't obey the scripture, when we're attacked, if we would just simply begin to sing. I don't feel like singing. He didn't ask you if you felt like singing. Nowhere can I find in the scripture that says, if you feel like singing, sing. All I can find is sing. When we sing, God listens to us and responds to us. When Paul and Silas were in jail and they were told to sing, they just sang and it changed their situation. Acts 16, 29. 
All because of a song. Singing brings God in the middle of our brokenness. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And asked the question, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? A revival broke out because of a song. Singing brings God in the middle of our brokenness and our darkness and our sickness and our disease and our fear and so much more. When you get in trouble, sing. For a minute, let's look at some scriptures that command us to sing in the New Testament. When we sing, we obey God. Colossians 3.16 Let Look at this verse of scripture. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and songs. Sing. Sing. Do you know the persecution that the early church faced? Do you know how they wanted to get rid of them? Do you know they're doing the same thing to us today? They told Paul and Silas and Peter and all those guys, Do not preach in the name of Jesus. They tell us when they want to call us down to the courthouse and to the city counseling meeting, don't mention the name of Jesus. Why do you suppose that? They know what the Bible says. The devil knows what the Bible says. If you ask anything in my name, it will be done. They don't mind you praying, but they don't want you to invoke the name of Jesus because there is power in that name. You can come and pray any, any way you want to, but just don't mention Jesus. You can pray in Allah, you can pray in Buddha, but don't pray in Jesus. Because the world and the devil knows that there is power in that name. And when you begin to sing in the name of Jesus, let me tell you, God stands up in the throne room. You have got his attention and he's getting ready to send help. And it doesn't matter what's going on and what you're going through. If you will learn to sing songs to each other. God will help us. Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. We got to move quickly, guys. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This scripture commands us to sing and make a melody. In this verse, the word sing is translated, make melody with vocal cords. And the word translated, making melody, means to pluck on a stringed instrument. We are supposed to play music and sing in the house of the Lord. We're supposed to tear it up to put everything in it that we possibly can. God wants us to tear it up when we sing. He wants us to rejoice. He wants us to give Him praise. He wants us to lift our voice and shout of His wondrous words. If we would only learn to sing. When you sing, you dig deep roots into the, the Word of God. Colossians 3.16 Singing is one of the, the chief ways which God's Word dwells in us. When we sing, it dwells in us. Listen to me. That singing comes on the heels of this. If you look prior to that, if you look back from 16 up to 13, look what it says. It puts it in the same category of bringing help. Bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so also you must do. But above all things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. You practice forgiving one another. You practice bearing with one another. You practice those things. And then you begin to sing. My God will do a great and wonderful thing in your heart when you do that. Let me tell you, God wants us to do that. He wants us to sing. He wants us to praise Him. Singing stands alongside preaching. It is not a warm-up to the sermon. It can be a sermon. When we sing, we build others up. Ephesians 5.19 says, Addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and songs. Colossians, I just read, the exhortation to sing comes on the heels of bearing with one another and forgiving one another. When you sing, you make war against the enemy. When you sing, you, you are spiritually strengthened for trials. When you sing, you walk in a God-designed pathway of joy. 
Psalms 511 Amplified. But let all those who take refuge and put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever sing and shout for joy. Because you make a covering. Come on now. Simply because I open my mouth and sing. Simply because I would dare to stand in the assembly of the saints and sing. Because you make a covering over them and you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you and be in high spirits. When you sing all of this happening, a covering comes over you. You're in high spirits. You have joy. There's God protects you. All of this happens simply because I'm singing. We emphasize an imbalanced church. You got to, all you got to do is pray and read the word and do all. No, you got to do, but you got to sing, church. God wants you to sing. Because when you sing, look at it, it said, let all of those. How many of you in this room take refuge in the Lord? Put your trust in you. Rejoice. Let them ever sing and shout up for joy. Because you make a covering over them. And defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you and be in high spirits. How would you like to be in high spirits instead of depressed about 90% of the time? I have never seen so many Christians that are depressed in my life. Never. That is, that is one of the things we pray a lot for is depression, anxiety, and fear. Among Christian people. Why? Because we haven't learned this scripture. Hide that scripture. Psalms 511. Take it and write it somewhere. If you'll begin to sing. The Bible said he would set an ambush against fear. Against anxiety. Against depression. He'll set an ambush against them. And he will cause your spirit to be joyful on the inside. Psalms 9 and 2. I will rejoice in you and be in high spirits. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. You cannot help but sing. Why do you think the world has tried to copy that? The devil wants his people to be as happy as possible, so he, he, he helps them with their music. He does. He, I'm, have, you, have you heard some of them? They can tear it up. Yes, they can. They can play music skillfully. They can sing the house down. And it's not even gospel. Because the devil wants them to be, have some happiness at, on their way to hell. So he helps them sing. Psalms 63 and 7. Did I give you that, Tony? Don't worry about it. Then. We'll skip it. I got to hurry. Look at James chapter 5, verse 13. James 5, verse 13. Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. Is any che cheerful? Let him sing. 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 As you study scripture, you will notice that singing gives birth to joy. Singing gives birth to joy. You know, I, I love my wife so very much. Every morning, there is music in my house. Every morning, there is the word of God. She starts by putting on the word of God, this guy reading the Bible. And he'll read about five chapters and then she goes into music. And she has a worship service every day, seven days a week. My house is filled with singing and filled with the word of God. I appreciate that so very much. I didn't tell her to do that. But in this woman there, I tell you, I've been married to her 40 years. I've never seen her depressed in my life. She's always got joy. She's always happy. She's always positive. And I believe it because she's a singing woman. She sings when she's, when she was so sick. Some of you guys don't know because she hadn't been coming here that long. But I almost lost her a few years ago. I thought my wife was going to die. She was in the hospital three times in one year. And I thought she wasn't coming home. And I was the most, I tell you, I've never been so scared in all my life. But through all of that, she sang. Through all of that, she didn't complain. She sang. Her attitude did not change. She stayed the same lady, same sweet woman I married. She stayed through all that. 
Let me tell you, that helped me. She doesn't know how much that helped me. If you struggle for joy in your life, I challenge you to sing. The last reason to sing is when you sing, you glorify God. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 10. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Hallelujah. People of faith will sing for joy and sorrow. Circumstances should not dictate our singing because singing is a command of God. We need to sing. We need to not let the devil steal our song. Chris, we're yet. Let me tell you, there's something very powerful about singing. If we would learn the art of singing in all of our distress, through all of this stuff, through all the chaos that's going on, if this church will learn to sing, if you will learn to sing in your home, if you will learn to sing in your car, if you will learn to sing in the gathering of the congregation, if you will learn to sing, something very powerful happens when you sing. The joy of the Lord rises up within us. The strength of God begins to touch us and to speak peace to us. All of those things happen to us when we sing. Church, we need to learn to sing again. We need to learn to sing again. With everything that is within us. Songs carry the message of God. When I sing the song, Amazing Grace, I know the wretch that I was. I know the wretch I was. When I sing, I never shall forget the day when the burdens on my soul were rolled away. Can I tell you when it was? It was September the 24th, 1202, 1973. I never shall forget the day when the burdens of my soul rolled away. I'll not forget the day when God healed me. In fact, God just healed me last night. I, went to, I drove up four hours to camp on Friday and worked all day at, at youth camp and drove home last night. I'm, that's why I'm a little tired today. We worked all day hanging sheetrock, or not sheetrock, but insulation. Ugh, I hate insulation. Insula insulation and board wall around it. My ankle was swollen up that big when I came home last night. I could barely walk. But this morning, I am healed. I am healed. I told the Lord about that last night when I went to bed. I said, Lord, this, I can't go to church tomorrow walking like a broke-legged dog. <laughs> he understands my language. That's how I talk to him. And he healed my body. I could run a foot race right now. No pain, no, no soreness. I am so grateful to God. We got up this morning and I was so sick. I felt like I told my wife, I am, you have to stop this car. I'm fixing to throw up. We were on our way to get mad. I started praying and asking God to heal me, and he healed me. I said, devil, you're not going to stop this service. I'm going and preach about singing. I'm going to sing praises to God. You think God doesn't come on the scene? He does. He does, church. we got to believe him like that. Just practice his word. Just practice that singing stuff. Now, I, know you, I know you guys pray and fast and read your word all the time. Just add singing to your arsenal of weaponry. And watch what happens. Stand with me if you would. How amazing is our God. If you're viewing us today, we're so grateful that you tuned in. And we're thankful for that and mindful of you in the audience. And I want to give you an opportunity, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, to invite him into your heart. Simply pray a simple prayer and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and cleanse me. If you will pray that prayer and believe that, your soul and your sins will, your soul will be saved and your sins will be forgiven. And you will be on your way to heaven. God bless you if you prayed that prayer and want to let us know, please do so. We would be so happy to hear from you. God bless you. Church, I want you to know that God loves us and he cares about us. He is mindful of everything that goes on in our life and in our hearts. 
And I know there's probably been a lot of emotions about things that have went on, but God is good to us and God is mindful of us. And if you don't know the Lord this morning, church, if there's someone in this room with me that does not know the Lord, I want to give you an opportunity to pray and ask God to forgive you and to come into your heart. Would anybody in this room with me today like to pray? If you just would put your hand up. Anybody in this room today, you need salvation and you want God to forgive you? God is good to us and God is merciful. Let's pray, church. Father, we're so grateful and thankful today. We are mindful of you and all that you do for us. And we ask you that you would put your hand of grace on us. That you would keep us as we move forward in our lives and in the life of our nation. Put your hand of grace and mercy upon us. Protect us and keep us, Father God. And we will be careful to praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.